Hey folks, Adam D here, and in this video, we want to go over how to get started on the access control module. So I'm not going to be directly solving any levels, although maybe the first one because it's very easy. But what I want to talk to you about is how to go about approaching these uh, specific levels. And one thing to remember is that the content may have changed, we may add things, move things around. So even if you see numbers, names that are different, the concepts still hold. We'll also be talking about the tools that you'll need to uh, do this and that way uh, that should help. So uh, here we are, we're at uh, on access control level one. Uh, here, uh, here's one instance of this. Again, yours may be different, that's okay. Um, so like usual, uh, LSSLA challenge. So all of these will have the format of slash challenge slash run. So you can run slash challenge slash run. Uh, and it's, you know, tells you uh, information in this series of challenges. You'll be working with various access control systems, break the system, to get the flag. Again, this is why we went over and talked about how to reason about, how to think about access control models, the different kinds of access control models so that you can uh, analyze and understand this. So saying uh, in this challenge, you'll work with different Unix permissions on the flag. Great. We've studied POSIX Unix permissions. The flag file will be owned by you and have 400 permissions. So this is actually giving us some LS output. It's saying before slash flag was, uh, oh, why is it like this? Oh, because I uh, already did this level. Let's reboot it. Um, I'm gonna start a practice one and then start this and then just redo this. Of course, I'm absolutely not going to restart this video. That would be crazy, crazy talk. Um, oh, weird that those are, hey, one hacking. That's me, I am the hacking. Okay, there we go, initializing. So we'll just double check this so we can see flag. And again, because you've watched all these videos, you know how to parse this output. That, aha, the flag file is readable by root. That's why I can't access it. Uh, and if I run challenge run, it's saying that before the access control was owned by root root and slash flag, afterwards it's um, slash flag, but owned by, root, uh, by the user hacker. And it's kind of saying here, the flag file will be owned by you and have 400 permissions. Um, so let's, uh, and again, remember this 400 is how you can uh, remember the access control based on the bits. So we usually don't keep the first, if you don't see um, four digits here, the, the first digit will be the set UID, uh, g, uh, GUID, the group ID, uh, set group ID, and the sticky bit. Uh, usually you won't see that and you'll just see these again this is base 7 octal so 400 zero, zero. so we will i'll open up my handy dandy calculator um and octal 400 zero, zero. so that would be these are uh so that's the the uh, read write execute so seven is all of them um so seven is one 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 uh four is one zero zero so read write execute are exactly these bits and I can actually flip them here so you can see them. So four is read, uh, two is uh, write, and one is execute, and five would be four and one, so read and execute, and one, one, one is seven, and six is readable and writable. Um, cool, okay. So yeah, we can see that, and you know if you're looking through this, you can see, oh yeah, slash flag, owned by hacker, great. Um, but you know, like I can just read this flag now it's owned by me. I can read it. Um, one of the things though, that you'll may have to use. So we already looked at LS. We looked at that a lot. Um, because I'm the owner of this, I can use ch mod, um, to change the permissions of files. So we can actually show this. I can ch mod zero, zero, zero slash flag. So this would now, if I do ls la slash flag and I cat flag, I'll see permission denied. Even though I am the owner of this file, I cannot currently read that. Um, I could do chmod, what do we say, 200 slash flag. So remember the bits here, two is read, write, execute. So this is write. So I'm making it, I can even do uh, two, three. So this is making it, if we double check, this should be writable by the owner, writable and executable by the group and nothing for everyone else. Um, cat slash flag, and I can see permission denied. So I could actually overwrite and change this flag. 
Of course, that would be terrible. I would not want to do that because then I wouldn't get the flag, but I could. I could write to it, but I can also, as the, the group root can write or execute it, but other people can't do that. Um, so chmod may come in handy to change permissions. Uh, you may need to, to use things like that. Um, or I think people pronounce it, some people pronounce it as chmod. I always pronounce it as like chmod, um, but do whatever makes you happy. Uh, LS, super important. Um, you may need to look at, we looked at the um, password file, EDZ password file shows you the other users on the system. That could be helpful. Uh, EDC groups, uh, group shows you all the groups on the system. That could be helpful of understanding uh, if you don't understand what the group is of, of a specific file or how the permissions gets changed. Uh, we talked about chmod, that's an important one to do. Uh, chown, so man, so chown, change the file owner and group. This is usable by root or by the owner of the file. Uh, so I can do something like root root. Why can't I not do that? Okay. I guess I don't fully understand the model, but here I was able to change the owner of the group from root to hacker, which maybe that helps me do whatever I want to do. Um, so chmod, uh, chown, I don't know, do people say chown? I guess, uh, chown, if you're a chmod or a chish to change shell. Um, so these, these change the ownership, so user and then group separate by colon is how to parse that. And then the file you want to change, uh, chown. So chown, chmod, ls, honestly, these are like, because you'll be given different, it'll show you how the access control changes and your goal is to then obviously read the flag. So maybe it's given you some ways or some options to uh, read the flag, which is uh, very useful. Um, let's see, and okay, that's for these levels. And then at level 13 or the current-ish level, at some point, again, I don't wanna tie it down too much, the levels will change. Uh, to something like this. So uh, so this is then switching over to see if you understand the Bell Lepadula model of mandatory access control. Uh, so again, it should be challenge uh, run. And so, yep, uh, break the system, get the flag, you're answering questions. So this is actually kind of two things, actually just testing your knowledge and making sure you understand Bell Lepadula, um, answer the question to get the flag. So in the challenge, the goal is to answer one question correctly in 120 seconds about the following mandatory access control system. Top secret, secret, classified, unclassified are the levels. So can a subject uh, C with level C, so can a classified subject write an object with level C? The answer should be yes. And well, it says, great, I solved it. Oh, okay, cool, done, just answer questions. But as maybe you can see from here, we didn't have categories, so we all, the systems will add categories. This time will go down. And the goal is what you want to do is to write a program to interact with it and answer these questions. That's where we're going. So um, what you really want to do, I think the best way to do this is with Pwn Tools. Um, and the process. Yeah, so you can, uh, it's pretty awesome. Uh, you can, you I've probably used Pwn Tools for a lot of other things. Um, and you can do, uh, you want context tubes. Yeah, tubes is the thing here, so process. So you can uh, interact with it. You can read a line, receive until, so read data until something. Um, so I'm not going into all of this because that's actually part of the goals of these challenges is for you to write a program that interacts with another program. And you'd be surprised at how much of a superpower this actually gives you when you're doing other things and you go on into your career. Uh, many programmers actually don't realize like, oh, you can script other programs. You can interact with other things. You've probably been going through Pwn College, talking to websites, making web requests. Well, you can just talk to a uh, process that's on your system and automate various things there and extract these levels and automatically reason about them. That's the goal here. And that's what you'll uh, want to be doing. So uh, anyways, I think that's all you need to get started with these challenge. I think you'll do great. And uh, you'll hopefully learn a lot about uh, actual real world access control systems. So uh, with that, I uh, will talk to you later.